Hey, what up everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you today, uh, talking a little bit about TNA news. TNA has been uh, uh, putting out publicity, talking about the big anniversary show that's going to be coming out sooner than later. Uh, for a while, it was being uh, you know, advertised that the main event was going to be EC3 getting his first TNA championship shot, going up against uh, Kurt Angle uh, for the TNA World Heavyweight title. EC3 been in... Uh, TNA for about two years. I was able to be at his debut uh, when he came in at the Bound for Glory in San Diego. Um, he started out as a little bit of a joke, and and from there he's been you know just climbing up the ranks, beating you know one name after another. EC3 was able to you know say in a short little while that he beat Bully Ray, um, that he beat Sting, um, that this guy is no joke. I think he's even beat Kurt Angle before in his career, but this one's going to be the big one, and it's going to be going for the championship. But now, um, you know, with their way that um, basically uh, Destination America uh, moved their show around, they ran out of a number of shows, so they have to go back and they have to do tapings uh, before Slammiversary uh, to make sure they have that one last show to do the, the go-home show to Slammiversary. Now it seems that show is actually going to be where EC3 and Kurt Angle is going to go because they don't want to have to deal with um, spoilers and they don't want to have to deal with word getting out about what happened at Slammiversary before Slammiversary happens because it'll really kill their actual pay-per-view buys that are going down. Now, Slammiversary needs a main event. Today it was announced that the King of the Mountain match uh, is going to be making its return to TNA. The King of the Mountain match is a match that we have not seen used in TNA since 2009. Uh, but basically, uh, TNA and Dixie Carter has been basically throwing everything against the wall, trying to make something stick. You saw last year TNA bringing back the six-sided ring, thinking that maybe when they went from six sides to four sides, that was something that was keeping um, you know, fans from watching uh, the product. Because basically, they just didn't... They didn't like it. You know, uh, TNA was always built on as an alternative uh, to WWE, especially when, you know, TNA, um, uh, you know, pushed the boundaries when WWE went um, to, to PG. Um, they, they let their guys cuss. They let them guys, their guys bleed. Um, you know, they tried to be a wrestling company that if people didn't like what was going on in WWE, they could flip the channel and watch it. And, you know, as soon as, you know, Hogan and Bischoff got in, got in there, uh, they basically... We're trying to make a rival to WWE, and they basically went back to the four-sided ring, uh, which fans were very vocal about right off the bat. And um, uh, the product became very much a copy-and-paste thing about what was going on in WWE. It was the same thing that was going down there. Now, TNA, they went back to the six-sided ring. I honestly was very surprised when I saw the Global Force Wrestling show. They went with the six-sided ring as well. Um, it seems as if Jeff Jarrett might be just trying to copy what he had done before and just sort of move back into trying to be there. I think the the, the wrestling market as of right now is very competitive with, uh, you know, of course, WWE is a strong number one ring of honor and TNA fighting to see who's going to be number two. You've got Lucha Underground. You've got Global Force coming up. You know, PWG is out there. Um, lots of indies are, are spread around. So there's a lot of wrestling products to be watching, and only people have so many times or so much time in order to watch these deals. Now, with the King of the Mountain match, it hasn't been said if this is going to be the, for the World Heavyweight title or if it's going to be for the X Division, or heck, they might do, you know, what WWE did and make it for the tag team one. Uh, like they, 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 WWE with the Elimination Chamber, the tag team Elimination Chamber match, which it, it was fun. Just wasn't what the Chamber had been in the past when, when you're thinking about going for the actual WWE or the World Heavyweight Championship. It adds a little bit more to the match. But, um, you know, they, they announced today that, that it, the. It's, they haven't really said if it's going to be for the World Heavyweight Championship or if it's going to be for the, the X Division or anything else, but that the King of the Mountain match will be returning. Honestly, in my mind, I can understand that TNA probably hears this question a lot about when the King of the Mountain match is going to return, but honestly, this match is a match that hasn't been featured since 2009, and according to the rules that were stated in the press release, if they are doing this, I think they are changing it up a little bit, or maybe they changed the King of the Mountain uh, before they stopped using it, and I, you know, stopped realizing it. Honestly, one of the first TNA pay-per-views that I ever um, got was, I believe, TNA um, Bound for Glory uh, 2006, is I believe what it was. Ended up being the screw job finish, I think, um, 
if I, I might be like mixing up times about what's going on, but I think this is when um, Jeff Jarrett won um, I, I, because of the the Hebner and the screwy referees, and I believe that this is what led to Jim Cornette coming in the company as trying to be like the uh, the commissioner or the, the GM or the guy that was sort of righting the wrongs and he was a baby face and he was trying to, to get things into motion uh, about what was going down. I remember the Hebner got susp suspended uh, for the screw job finished at the pay-per-view. Um, for some reason, I think Kevin Nash got involved. I'm not 100% sure. I don't remember like it was yesterday. It's like the best match I ever saw in my life. But uh, uh, I do remember that that was one of the shows. Uh, that was one of the shows that I, I checked out for the first time uh, of TNA um, and, and was, was into it. It was a fun show. Like, it, that, that's what got me into watching. Um, if they had impact at the time and, and, and started rolling around watching uh, the product, which led to me being a fan today. But um I don't think that this is is something that's going to be getting eyes back onto the product. That I don't think that people are really clamoring for that King of the Mountain match uh, so much. Um, you know, the King of the Mountain match was always sort of a, a a clusterfuck where guys had to get a pinfall in order to be eligible, and then you climb up the ladder and you grab the belt. Um, of course, if you take a pinfall or a submission, you get sent to the penalty box for two minutes. But the whole match just really makes itself really confusing and I think that they're going to change it this this year where actually um, the belt comes into play during the match or once you score the pinfall then the referee hands you the belt and it's up to you to get up the ladder and hang the belt on a hook and um, if the belt falls the referee picks it up and it's up to the next pinfall in order to do it um, it seems sort of lost and as Brian Alvarez put it on Wrestling Observer Live is it's probably going to take like three screens just to put up on the rules up on the thing. And wrestling's supposed to be easy. There's supposed to be some gimmick matches along the way. But this is not one. Um, and I don't really see fans jumping on board to check this out. But we'll have to see. Slammiversary 2015, the return of the King of the Mountain match. What would I think would be the main event of the TNA Slammiversary 2015 show really has me just honestly really confused. Uh, TNA put out a uh, press release basically saying that the King of the Mountain match would be returning at uh, Slammiversary and it would be the new main event of the show. Uh, some people thought maybe this will be just a, a way of um, putting a championship match on the show that Angle would be able to keep the title one more night and then be able to go on on television and be able to be the champion to fight EC3 in a one-on-one uh, -on -one match that was supposed to be the big built-up match of the night. And uh, they came up with all the rules of the match with basically, um, you know, there's competitors inside of the ring. You have to pin somebody. Whoever is pinned gets sent to the... Uh, the um, penalty box uh, you know whoever did the pin is now active to climb up the ladder and uh, try and place the championship onto a hook to become the champion um, those rules make you want to shake your head enough um, but now they we have the names uh, for the king of the mountain match with uh, Jeff Jarrett who made his return to TNA Impact Wrestling on uh, on the big Wednesday show is a big surprise with him and Karen showing up, even you know showing up and supporting Global Force Wrestling, talking all about it. Um, People have been talking about this in depth for the last 24 hours. Um, what TNA and Global Force Wrestling, what Jeff Jarrett and Dixie Carter are doing in business together. Jeff Jarrett on television is saying it's just a chance to come back and have one more match. Um, on television, there was no talk of the title being involved, but uh, how do you have a King of the Mountain match without it being for a championship? And as of right now, all of the competitors have been named. Jeff Jarrett was named on television, and then today, uh, via the TNA Impact website, Matt Hardy, Eric Young, Drew Galloway, and Bobby Roode, um, some of the biggest names that are in uh, TNA were added to the show to sort of complete it and uh, finish it off. Um, the only thing that I was surprised about is that Eddie Edwards wasn't named to this, seeing how Bobby Roode, who was a former champion but is, is currently involved in a tag team feud, his tag team partner is, is wrestling in uh, Austin Aries versus Davey Richards. That's a singles match where the winner gets to pick his stipulation for match number five of the best of uh, 
best of five series to see who becomes the new tag team champions. So you think you would have a lot of interest, um, you know, wrapped up in that match. Drew Galloway has had a lot of things going on since debuting for Impact. Eric Young has been involved in a lot of the main event storylines. Eric Young versus Kurt Angle has, has been the uh, the storyline getting us all the way until Slammiversary. Uh, Matt Hardy, um, who took some time off after his uh, brother, um, Broke his leg in a motorcycle accident riding around on his property. He also just had a baby, but uh, I guess TNA was able to um, sweet talk him into in coming back. And he's going to be a, a part of this big ladder match um, where I don't know what the future holds for this match. There's no word this is, is a number one contenders match for the next person to have a big match on Impact for a, a chance to go after Angle uh, versus EC3's winner um, on Impact. Uh, but you would think that more than likely after Angle versus EC3, even if this is only the first match, you would want to prolong that feud for at least two to three months uh, with these guys going back and forth at it with big rematches on Impact. Um, so I don't know what these guys are fighting for in TNA. They honestly really haven't done a great job at promoting um, the show as a whole. A lot of this has been just really put together on the fly. Um, the Dollhouse versus Austin Kong and Brooke was a match that was named on Facebook. Um, so um, I'm not really sure what to do with that. And lastly, in Anderson versus EC3 and Tyrus seems like a match that was just thrown together at the last minute without television as well. But... Um, I'm really looking forward to see Jeff Jarrett make his return. Uh, the talks are that he's going to be wrestling more with TNA than just one night. So we'll have to see what this comes down. You know, like I said, you know, Bobby Roode is involved in a, in a tag team feud uh, right now. Uh, my guess is that he's not going to win that feud. I, I'm guessing that the Wolves are going to pull it out and Davey Richards and Eddie Edwards are going to be the tag champs yet once again. Um, so maybe he has a chance to become a number one contender. Um, Drew Galloway is a guy that is he's, he's in a group. Um, but he easily could be in a group as, as the leader um, going after that. Eric Young, I don't think he has a shot to win this match. Matt Hardy seems like a guy that was just sort of thrown into it at the last minute, trying to make a last competitor. Um, but Jeff Jarrett, I, I'm guessing, would be the odds-on guy to do it. Maybe the, the Global Force wrestlers and, you know, that are um, signed with him, uh, that are able to make an appearance on the show, helping him win this match. And it's sort of a screw job finish, leading us to TNA versus Global Force. Force. Uh, maybe Kurt Angle sees all the competitors come down to the ring and before the match starts, he says there's no way you can have a King of the Mountain match without him. And he adds himself and it becomes a championship match added at the last minute. But maybe Angle's at the point of his career where, where TNA doesn't want him wrestling on back-to-back -back nights. So we'll have to see what comes from here. But uh, I'm guessing uh, Jeff Jarrett is the guy that's going to be able to pull this out and be the guy um, to win the King of the Mountain match, the match that's named after him, and that will continue on his storyline in TNA, keeping him around, whether if it's for him to be the new owner, whether if it's him to be um, an online or an on-camera uh, competitor uh, until you know Global Force has their own television, um, or maybe just become the all-out all owner of uh, TNA Impact Wrestling. Yet, it, once again, we'll have to see... What the future holds? It, a lot of questions to be answered here. Well, all the questions that I've asked during the TNA videos that I made last night, talking about the King of the Mountain match with Jeff Jarrett making his return, was why Kurt Angle was not being involved in the match. You know, when we were told that they were rolling out this King of the Mountain match for the Slam of Virtue show on Sunday, that the championship would be on the line, either the X Division title or the uh, World Heavyweight TNA title, people were thinking. And uh, now it comes out that basically TNA is going to be debuting a new title declared the brand new King of the Mountain Championship. And um, this brings up so many questions to my mind. I think it tips the hat a little bit saying that Jeff Jarrett is going to be winning this match on Sunday and becoming the new King of the Mountain Champion. But my only question is, what is the King of the Mountain Championship? Because you can't be really doing King of the Mountain matches um, you know, every month on television. It doesn't really make that much sense. It's not really a match that people are clamoring for. Uh, you know, TNA 
hasn't done one since 2009, and here we are in 2015. I hear that every once in a while, people were you know saying, why don't you bring this back? But I don't think it was number one on the list of most asked for things by TNA wrestling fans. When you look at the competitors in this match, Jeff Jarrett, Bobby Roode, Matt Hardy, Eric Young, Drew Galloway, Jeff Jarrett is the only guy that can win the King of the Mountain Championship. It doesn't really make any sense. It makes me think back to when TNA uh, brought out a new championship in 2008. That was the TNA Legends title, which was brought out by Booker T, which was what I heard at the time was you know TNA trying to keep it quiet. That Booker T was uh, unhappy about the way he was being used. He was promised um, bigger things when he came over from WWE. And I know that people look at uh, Booker T and they, they sort of laugh about his TNA run. But um, he got there. They gave him this championship. He held it for a little while. Um, I believe he lost the championship to AJ Styles. Uh, and from there, the belt bounced around before you know Kevin Nash and Mick Foley had his hands on it. From there, Eric Young got it and he declared it now to close declared the global championship which lasted for a little while before losing the title to Rob Terry who lost it to AJ Styles who then named it the television championship that belt only lasted um, until about 2014 when it really became a joke they, they, they tried to design it where it was going to be um, you know, um, you know fought on uh, television week in and week out and they had um, Devon win the championship as a part of Aces and Eights when they were taking over the company. And then they forgot to book Devon on the next set of television taping, so the title didn't even get defended for a month um, before they just finally... Devon ended up leaving the company. They never brought him into losing it. Um, so they basically just had to... Uh, have him vacate the title and uh, have a, a new person win it, which ended up being uh, Samoa Joe, who ended up coming back and beating him again for the championship. So, eh, it is what it is. But um, the Legends title, Global title, Television title never really meant anything to TNA in the long run. So, I don't think that the King of the Mountain Championship is going to mean anything. Um, it sort of tips their hat that, that Jarrett's winning this match, though. That's the only thing I can really think of.